Hi, Stephen Caleb from Brownells, and today we want to talk about barrels for the AR-15, specifically barrel lengths. Yes, because there's, you know, just when you you thought that there couldn't be anything new for the AR-15, um, I feel like the 13.7 kind of popped in and was like, hey, I'm the best barrel length. So Yeah, that's, uh, that's what's currently going on. Yeah, so I think we, this is a good time, you know, we should take this opportunity to kind of reevaluate the uh, barrel length selection for the AR-15 and kind of talk about which ones are favorite and why right. and uh, share that knowledge with you guys. Do you actually need anything other than a 16 inch carbine barrel? So 16 inches, uh, I think it's still known as the, the do all barrel length. Uh, 13 seven tried to say that, you know, it's the do all barrel length, um, but it's a great barrel length. I love that barrel length, but I, I still don't think it's the do all. I wouldn't okay. call it that. All right. Uh, because, you know, it with a wider variety of bullet weights, uh, the 16 still kind of is the sweet spot as far as velocity goes. 13.7 does, it still does really, really well with your, your common like 55 grain and your 62 grain. But if you shoot anything other than that, uh, you're not getting the full benefits of your ammunition selection. Uh, so it, in that case, 16 would still definitely make more, more sense for you. All right. Um, not that much difference than with a 14 and a half with like a pinned muzzle device on it or something to, right. make, to make legal length. Yeah, so 13.7, uh, with a lot of muzzle devices out there, not all of them, you can actually pin them to make legal length so you don't have to use a, a pistol brace or SBR it. Right. So that's, what, that's why 13.7 is a, a really good option. You know, it's that good, that good in between. So if you don't, you don't want to go so short as like a 10 and a half, um, but you also don't want to go so long as a 16, I think 13.7 is really the, really the sweet spot. And, and the guns seem to be getting shorter, you know, because of all the... Short guns know. are hot now, Steve. They are because of competition and, you know, self-defense and stuff like that. Yeah, like this, uh, this gray gun, this is my most recent personal build. And this is a 13.7 with a pin and welded muzzle device. Yeah. And kind of what that does, why I like this gun so much, is that it keeps a lot of the weight uh, closer towards the center of the gun rather than pushing it out front, especially mm -hmm. since I'm running a Surefire Warden. So I'm already adding extra weight to the muzzle anyway. Last thing I want is th for this gun to be too front heavy. Yeah. And 13.7, you know, pushes that back. And the velocity difference between a 13.7 and a 16 inch, uh, shooting 55 grain or 62, I mostly shoot 55 grain out of this gun, is minimal. It's like, it, it, I mean, it's, 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 it's not even really a factor, um, unless you're shooting really, really far, which I'm not, I have stretched this gun out on the 500 range and it does well at that, but honestly, I'm not too concerned about, um, you know, that terminal performance on this gun yeah. because of what this gun's used for. And because that, uh, that muzzle velocity, the, the, the difference on that is so minimal, that muzzle energy is also minimal because muzzle right. energy is calculated by yeah. you know, muzzle velocity and bullet weight. So it's not that big of a deal. And most of the stuff on the market today is 55 and 62 grain right. you know, offerings. That's what most of us are shooting. And mm -hmm. as we mentioned before, you can so go short as to get a 10 and a half inch. There are shorter barrels out there, but in 223556, I personally don't recommend going any shorter than that uh, because you know not only do you have to kind of, is it more finicky on your gas system? Yeah. Uh, but also once you go below 10 and a half inches, for every inch you cut off of that, the differences in your muzzle velocity increase dramatically, which means your muzzle energy is gonna change dramatically as well. So personal recommendation, stay above that 10 inch mark. And uh, it's, it's really not a huge deal. Yeah, and those shorter barrels tend to try to extract at higher pressures too. Yeah. So uh, you're gonna run a lot smoother and easier if you got a little bit more length than that. Yeah, so I mean, it's not just the performance of the actual bullet at that point. Now we're talking about firearm reliability. So right. now you have two main factors to consider. So, I mean, honestly, there's really no reason to go shorter. What about on the other side? What about like a 20 or 24 inch barrel? Yeah, so again, for our common bullet weights here, once you get above, you know, the difference between 16 to 18 it's pretty minimal. Unless you're shooting some really light bullets or really heavy bullets at uh -huh. the extremes, uh, you're not gonna see a huge difference shooting these mid-range bullets, which are your 55 and 62s. Now going even further from that, you know, stretching it out from 18 to let's say 20 or 24, 
that's that those numbers start to not matter even more. So honestly, the longest I would recommend going on a AR-15, uh, shooting common bullets, or even a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter, like your let's say 50s, 52s, or yeah. you know 68s, you know something like that. You don't need to go above 18 inches. Right. Anything anything other than that, you're just kind of wasting material there. Well, Add weight. What if you're shooting at a thousand yards and your bullet is about that long? You know, because it's like 120 grain. <laughs> Well, then you're probably not doing it in an AR-15. Um, oh, it's oh, so things get done. Thing, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's not. Then you start having to figure out what round's actually going to fit in your magazine, right? Because it can't be too long for the magazine. So, yeah. So the the big advantage to the long barrels is kind of going away, slowly going away. Yeah, and there's another thing a lot of people don't consider is that if you're going to be, you know, firing multiple rounds at a long distance target, it's Honestly, better to have a shorter, thicker barrel than a longer, skinnier barrel. Because then you're going to, with that longer, skinnier barrel, you're going to start stringing shots sooner because your barrel's going to heat up faster and you're going to have a more barrel whip because of how thin it is. But with that shorter, fatter barrel, it's going to take longer to heat up and it's more rigid, more stout because it's shorter uh, with more material that you're actually going to perform better. So uh, in most cases, you know, if you're firing more than one shot or more than a handful of shots, a shorter barrel will outperform that longer barrel uh, as far as, you know, group size goes. Wow, strong words sense. indeed. If that makes sense. Well, if you agree with that, let us know in the comments. If you disagree with that, we'd really like to hear from you because uh, there's a lot of barrel lengths out there and everybody seems to have their favorite. Let us know what you think. In the meantime, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.